Okay, so now we can talk about the objective um, of this project and what we're trying to accomplish. So we're using a similar outline um, to this to this paper here, this article published um, already. So this one um, you can look you can look it up yourself. Uh, although you might find that you have to pay to get it unless you're subscribed to a subscription service such as JSTOR or a similar one. So if you're a student, then have a look at your local library and s see if it's available online. So they do it for the, the Nifty 50, which is the Indian stock market. So there's some slight differences in the results. Um, notably, for example, in market capitalization, the, the MCAPs for the Nifty 50 are much lower than some of the constituents in the, the S&P 500, which, which we're using. But the broad ob objective is to test certain theories of um, what what determines dividends from an external point of view. So the the numbers that we can see on their balance sheet income statements um, and the ratios we can calculate from that. Um, and which ones determine how how big of a dividend yield that they're paying. So these are the theories that we can quantitatively test with some financial ratios. So we we'll start off with the Lintner's model. And this one basically just says that the dividend that a firm pays out is based on the current year's earnings. And the current year's earnings is based on the dividends of the previous year and the earnings of that year also, and so on. So that continues all the way through the company's history. Um, and so this, what this theory is saying is that the higher the earnings per share, the higher the dividend yield, because dividends based on this theory is based on current earnings. The next one, phase of development. So this just says that mature companies have more stable earnings. And so in general, they're, they're able to pay out more cash dividends because they have fewer growth opportunities. And so this of course suggests that the more mature or as a proxy for that, the, the age of the company should, the higher the age, the higher the dividend yield. The next one is very simple to understand. This one's just leverage. So the more debt that a firm has, the more it's worrying about paying off the debt um, through interest and then uh, eventually paying off the debts as a whole. And so companies, especially if they have a very high leverage, they're going to experience costs of financial distress. And so we, this, this theory is basically just predicting that the more leverage the company is, the less it's going to pay out as dividends. And that makes sense intuitively. So the next one, size of the firm, um, also very basic that the market capitalization uh, is a determinant of dividend policy. And this is because a larger company with a high market capitalization and remember market market capitalization is just the the price per share times the number of outstanding shares um so it, it's just saying that the a larger company has better access to capital markets and so it is more likely to use cash to pay dividends um although so yeah if you if you think about a, a smaller company then the access to capital markets isn't going to be as good and so it kind of wants to retain the cash to use for for um, positive mpv projects and um, whereas a larger company can just use the cash um, to pay out dividends and then borrow or um, get equity funding if it needs to and the final one pecking order hypothesis um, this one's just saying that firms with better growth opportunities will um, will retain more funds for internal funding uh, and therefore pay fewer dividends. So this this predicts a negative correlation or causation potentially with the market book ratio. Um, and that, that's all the theories. So in, in conclusion, this is the model. So it's just saying that the dividend yield is equal to all these weight parameters w1 w0 w2 blah, blah blah and then all the the ratios or components of the theories we looked at so market book ratio age market capitalization 
leverage earnings per share and then we're adding epsilon for the gaussian noise uh, since this is a, a standard model and remember that this this is a tobit model so this this is based on a of a latent index where we're observing this dividend yield and this this if you, you should go back and look at the previous model if you don't remember but this is not going to be just a simple straight line there's they're censoring at zero um which which is very there's a very a, a lot of censoring actually so um the model changes slightly and uh, you'll see that when you code it up and so this is the data that we're working with so we've got data from 2009 um, until present of 49 randomly sampled companies from the S&P and you can think for yourself if this is going to cause any bias in any particular way but that's that's the data we're working with so um we've I've split it up so that we've got just under 2000 training examples here and then 50 examples for testing now let me just get the laser pointer so I can point a bit all right so we've got five features as we've just talked about and so we're trying to use this, these features to predict the dividend yield here which is y train or white or we're trying to predict y test using the supervised learning problem here and so the the, the reason we don't have a validation set is simply because this is a very uh, basic model that we're working with and we're we're just trying to get the maximum use out of our data um i've kind of optimized it a little bit using the hyperparameters that you're going to be using um such as the the number of steps in the gradient descent etc but in general we're just trying to get the model working in tensorflow um because this this of course is just a beginner course here so this is the when when you plot the dividend yields this is what we we find so as you can see, very high censoring at zero, and then a Gaussian distribution um, beyond beyond that.